Hello there, I am Tigster2005 of the Prequel Gang, and welcome to another episode of Tigster Talks, the show where I talk about stuff by myself. Well, fellas, it's been a long time coming, but a, an MCU movie has finally, finally topped the Avengers. I am, of course, referring to Avengers Endgame, the, the conclusion of this entire saga, the, the biggest, most grand conclusion <laughs> of of this entire thing oh my god where do i even begin <laughs> um well i can begin by saying spoiler warning uh i know i've been saying this for a lot of the movies but seriously do not watch this video if you haven't seen endgame like there there are some things that you just need to see without it being spoiled just just go watch it well, you have to watch every other MCU movie before this in order to understand what's going on, but still, do it. What are you, what are you doing? Just, just do it. Anyway, um, Endgame. This takes place after Infinity War, after Th Thanos' big snap that wipes out half of humanity, and it takes place, it's like at the end, you know, the, and... The Avengers that are still remaining, they end up killing Thanos, but then what's going what, what's gonna happen next? Well, five years later, they're all they've all sort of gone their separate ways and uh and they they met uh, uh Carol from, from Captain Marvel, who is like going off to like all other parts of the universe, um to like solve uh not solve but like basically help people there because what's happening what was happening on Earth was also happening on in other places, so yeah, there was that. Uh, that was that was a, a an interesting plot point. That was a, a good way to tie tie in this movie to to Captain Marvel that movie. So yeah, they're cool. <laughs> um, but then uh, the, the the plot point that really starts off this whole movie is Ant Man coming back from the quantum realm. He somehow finds finds his way back and. Apparently to him, it only felt like it, he was there for five minutes, but in fact he was there for five years. Or, wait, five minutes or five hours? I think it was five hours now that I think about it. Uh, yeah, and so that was, of course we have that, uh, and that ends up being super important because they use the the quantum realm in that machine to like basically, they, they use it to travel through time. And basically like they all get together, um, and, well, they need to find all of the Infinity Stones and, and like, basically use them to bring everyone, uh, everyone who, who was, everyone back, like, everyone who was, uh, who was killed by, by Thanos, uh, in, by Thanos' snap, rather, not necessarily by, Th by Thanos, but, like, well, it was by Thanos, but, like, by Thanos' snap, specifically, not, like, like, he throws Gamora into the thing, like, no, no, she's not coming back. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was the plan, and, and like, they, they were all arguing in some ways, like, like, Tony Stark at first, he was like, nope, this is not gonna work, I'm out of this, I'm, I have a child to take care of now, uh, because, yeah, Tony and, and, uh, Pepper Potts, they had, they had a child, and that's pretty cool, I guess. So, um, yeah, meanwhile, Thor is in New Asgard, or, so, or that's the place that was called New Asgard, that's the place where all of the Asgardians live now, that's, it's on Earth, and he's just, like, he's depressed, he's, like, he's just, like, drinking a lot of alcohol and just, and playing Fortnite <laughs> with, with the rock dude from Thor Ragnarok. Like that that's such the that's like a such a 2019 thing about this movie, just them playing Fortnite and yelling at kids <laughs> who are playing Fortnite in <laughs> Oh that was that was such a funny scene in the movie, just them playing Fortnite. <laughs> oh man, that that like dude dude dude, that's like like, that, that part takes place in, like, what, 2023? Because, like, Infinity War takes place in 2018, and this is five years later. So, that 2023. Is Fortnite still going to be relevant in 23? That this is, like, the scene where, in the Avengers, where, 
where they had like Black Widow there was being interrogated and they were all speaking Russian and it was just not convincing at all. Meanwhile here, this is probably a scene that's not going to age well in a way that's just going to be incredibly funny. So, yeah, that... <laughs> uh, and yeah, Thor's character again, uh, I don't want to go on about this for too long, but yeah, Thor is just like super depressed, he's like drinking a lot and all that, because apparently he feels like he he's like a huge failure, and because like he didn't, he couldn't save everyone, and I, I guess he's like really depressed now, which, now that I think about it, like, it sort of, it, this, this makes sense, like, yeah, and I know I, I complained about like Thor Ragnarok changing, like, Thor's character uh, a lot, like, his personality changed completely, like, since when is he a comedian, but looking looking back on like infinity war and and this movie to an extent uh maybe it could have been that like thor was just like really depressed in uh like secretly really depressed in, in thor ragnarok because well uh he, he lost he lost his mother he he thought he lost his brother and uh and like he had a like he saw, like, a vision in Age of Ultron that was, like, leading up to, to this movie, and he was, like, trying to find it, and maybe at that point he was just, like, being, he was, like, stressed or something, and he was using humor as a defense mechanism, or may, and also maybe perhaps he was, all, he also learned to, like, lighten up a little bit slightly while hanging out with the, with the rest of the Avengers, while, you know, partying with them. You know, maybe those, those factors contributed to it, because, let's be honest, in Thor, uh, he was, he, he didn't really leave Asgard that much, uh, well, he did, but he didn't, he hasn't interacted with anyone outside of Asgard, uh, and in Thor The Dark World, he, he was trying to save his girlfriend, so, yeah, there was also that, and also, oh yeah, and of course he broke up with his girlfriend, so that was probably, he, that was, that might have contributed to that, but again, uh, I still, I still think that Thor Ragnarok could have made that more clear, because now, you know, you could explain it away, but you know, they, they could have made it a little bit more clear. They could have had a scene where somebody was like, "Yo, Thor, what's go what's going on? You're not, you're, you're like acting different." Uh, you know, they could have had a scene like that, but they didn't. But whatever. The, I, I'm, I okay. I digressed way too much on that one. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> back to back to Endgame. Uh, so this movie, uh, uh, what was I talking about? Fortnite, something, something about Fortnite, right, okay, um, <laughs> so they got all the Avengers team together again, and they, they made the time machine, they needed to go back, they, to go back in time to retrieve the Infinity Stones, uh, to use against Thanos, so they had to revisit some of the other uh, what was taking place in some of the other movies, like, like, the Avengers, uh, like, and Thor the Dark World and Guardians of the Galaxy, those I'm pretty sure were the three movies that, that were taking place in the times that they went to. Uh, meanwhile, Ant-Man just had, like, no idea what was going on in a lot of ways, like, uh, like, he wasn't involved in those movies. He was introduced in Ant-Man, which was, like, after Age of Ultron. This was after the Avengers, after Thor Dark World, after Guardians of the Galaxy. So, and also, one thing I'd like to point out is that, like, uh, Bruce Banner, he, like, did something, so he combined the, the like, the, the smart scientist who was Bruce Banner with, like, the, the Hulk, and <laughs> Disney Plus's subtitles, they call him Smart Hulk? I don't know why I find that so funny, but it's just really funny to me, like, <laughs> he's called Smart Hulk. <laughs> it's like, Smart Hulk, yeah, no, these these are very confusing times we live in. <laughs> Smart Hulk, that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> so, they go back in time, they get the Infinity Stones, but they also alert Thanos, because if Thanos was in Guardians of the Galaxy, and they had... They had the scene where Quill was was grabbing that thing in the beginning of the movie, uh, and it ended up being that the thing was an Infinity Stone. He didn't know that at the time, but uh, the people who were there 
who went back in time. I think Nebula went back. Yeah, Nebula was definitely there, and someone else. I forgot who else there uh, was there, but uh, uh, Nebula from Guardians of the Galaxy, of course, was there. And now, like, there was a thing implanted in her head that was like, it. It basically Thanos was alerted to to the to what was going on, and he kind of pieced everything together. So. So then, uh, they got all the Infinity Stones, but then they, they were, they were suddenly got attacked by Thanos in this huge army, and, like, a big fight scene happened. Uh, at first, Smart Hulk, uh, snapped the Infinity Gauntlet and, uh, brought everyone, uh, who was killed off by Thanos' snap, they, they were brought back, brought back to life. So now, yep, Spider-Man, Spider-Man is back, yay, and... Doctor Strange and Bucky Barnes and everyone else. <laughs> uh, they they were all fighting Thanos and uh, that was a really good fight scene there. Everything was like it, non-stop action, non-stop like thrills and stuff. And suddenly Captain America was like worthy of Thor's hammer. Which oh yeah, Thor's hammer. Uh, Thor uh, borrowed uh, his hammer from when it existed during Thor the Dark World. So, yeah, there was that, and... Yeah, apparently Cap was is worthy of Thor's hammer now. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so that was a thing, and they were fighting, and... It, it was just really... Uh, it was good. <laughs> uh, that's all... That's what I want to say about it. It was just... It was really, really good. Like, a lot of this movie, it was just, like, a lot of comedy, of course, because it's Marvel. Of course, there's gonna be humor and comedy in it. Uh, that was more towards the beginning, but it, like, it was, like, it naturally progressed to, like, okay, this is, like, a serious thing. No, no, no ha-has right now. We, ju we just gotta focus on this. That was, like, what this whole fight scene was. And, and, uh, Quill seemed to reunite with with Gamora but uh it wasn't really it wasn't really much of a reunion because this was not the same this this Gamora was not from the same timeline as Gamora who got killed in Infinity War so uh like the the relationship that Quill and Gamora built in over the course of Guardians and Guardians Vol 2 yeah no we can scrap that that never that that didn't happen with the <laughs> with this timeline version of Gamora, so... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll do something with this if they make, like, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol 3, or something, or, I don't know, something like that. Uh, I don't know if they'll do that. But anyway, uh, eventually, the big scene was, uh, when, uh, when, when Tony Stark grabbed the Infinity Gauntlet and uh, and Thanos' line was, I am inevitable, because, like, the whole thing with that was, like, was, like, yeah, they, they tried to stop him by going back in time, and he still came back, he still managed to, uh, to, like, cause this whole thing, he was, I, went, I am inevitable, which, in some ways, yeah, that was, he was inevitable, he was going to happen, no matter what, and, and then, and then Tony Stark, he was there, <clears throat> and, but right before the snap, he literally, he said, I am, and I am Iron Man. And then he snapped, and then Thanos and all of his army, he got turned to dust. And at that moment, I just, I just wanted to clap. I just wanted to applaud. That was, that was just a brilliantly executed scene right there. Because, like, this, it calls back to, like, the very beginning of the MCU. The very first Iron Man, where he at the very end of the movie said, I am Iron Man. And then the very last thing he ever says in his life is, I am Iron Man. So, it, this is, it was brilliant. Like, like it was, I just, it, I can't put it into words. It was just that good. <laughs> the scene right there, that was just, it was perfect. It, it was literally perfect. And then the conclusion, what happens afterwards was, well, they gotta put all the Infinity Stones back uh, to the times where, uh, like, where they got them from. When they got them from, I should say, because uh, time, it's not really 
places and times. It's confusing, but it is it's good. <laughs> um, but before that, there was of course the the them uh, was sort of a funeral kind of event over Tony's like over Tony Stark, his death, and oh my God, this this was like the perfect touch. They 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 like had a thing right there and th they had this little the thing from the first iron man movie they called back to the very beginning once more the thing that said proof that tony stark has a heart like dude that they, that could not have been better like i just love how they called back to the very first movie like they didn't forget where this whole series came from back in 2008 10 mo 10 years no 11 years before this movie was released this whole thing started they haven't forgotten they haven't forgotten the first iron man oh the incredible hulk movie that came out the same year yeah no we can forget about that that doesn't really matter but iron man it's important this character is important without 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 iron man this whole this whole operation would never have happened the fact that the first iron man was as good as it was it led to the creation of some of these amazing movies. We got the Avengers, we got Guardians of the Galaxy, we got Thor, Thor the Dark World, although those are movies that are less popular. We got like Captain America Civil War, the second half of it, which was like really good and, and specifically. We got Infinity War, we got Endgame, we got Spider-Man Homecoming, we got Doctor Strange, we got Ant-Man, we got all sorts of these movies that are all not they're not all super amazing but for what it's worth 23 films and only one only one movie was not important the incredible hulk was the only one that that didn't really add much to the overall story like, you can skip that movie, and the only thing you would lose is the Hulk's backstory. Which, you know, they could have just... They, it, even if they didn't have that, they could have still explained it in the Avengers. They, had, they recast Bruce Banner anyway, so, like, it's not like... Yeah, no, um... In my opinion, just... All of this... All of this started with Iron Man. And in the end, Iron Man died. He died to save the universe, basically. Like, if any other character were to die in that way, it would not have been as impactful as it is, as it was here. Um, and, of course, Iron Man wasn't the only one who died on this whole thing. Like, Black Widow got killed because they needed to get the Soul Stone, and uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye, they were both, like, uh, arguing over who was to sacrifice themselves because... They didn't want to sacrifice the other person, they both wanted to sacrifice themselves. So, so they end up, ended up fighting over that, like, forcing themselves into the thing, and forcing the other person back onto the platform, and Black Widow ended up basically committing suicide to save the universe, which, yeah, no, that's deep. There's gonna be a Black Widow movie after this movie, but, like, I, that's going to probably have to be a prequel, because there's no way that she's coming back. She's dead. She wasn't killed by Thanos' snap. She she sacrificed herself. And, uh, that's, that's, yeah. And then the conclusion is just, it's beautiful. They have, they have Captain America going back in time to, uh, to place the Infinity Stones back to where they were and he probably returned Thor's hammer as well because you know he was worthy and all that and you know they needed to bring Thor's hammer back to Thor because you know they, they can't mess up with they can't mess up the time space continuum in that way but then when it came time for him to come back he didn't he didn't come back instead he spent his life on the life that he wanted to spend uh like back in like captain america the first avenger now captain america the first avenger i didn't think that movie was that good i thought it was a good movie i thought it was a good movie don't get me wrong but 
it as far as like this whole and the whole mcu is concerned it wasn't it's like one of the one of the weaker ones but here this movie endgame it it just makes that ending so much better because well in in the first avenger captain america meets someone and and she was supposed to be like the love of his life but then he sacrificed himself he ends up ended up being frozen in ice and he woke up 70 years later to take part in the avengers movie and captain america the winter soldier and yeah you, you know the story by now but here well he goes back in time and he he lives his life he lives the life that he wanted to live and he appears right there in that scene on a bench next to the lake and it's just a beautiful scene it is a beautiful beautiful scene and he hands off his shield to uh the falcon character uh who was in captain america the winter soldier um and he and at first he asks him like what what does holding the shield feel like and he says that it feels like it doesn't belong to him but but uh but cap says that it it, it does belong to him now he's it he, cap was handing off his shield to a friend of his a friend who realistically he he hasn't seen in literal decades in literal decades so because yeah he hasn't he literally hasn't seen any of them in decades so yeah he's like an old man in this scene and it's just it's beautiful meanwhile thor joins the guardians of the galaxy that remained and he's like yeah quill was supposed to be the captain there but basically thor was like everyone respected thor more so thor became like the the captain honestly the guardians of the Gar Gar the, 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 the guardians characters they um they really i feel like their their story arc they really don't have mu much else to they really don't have anywhere to go after this point like i feel like their characters were just they were they were what they were in Guardians Vol 2 and in Infinity War, but now I don't know. I just, I just feel like there's not really much you can really do with them, because at the end of the day, they're not. I, they 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 seem like friends at first, but they're always like fighting. They're always arguing about every little thing. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there will be a Guardians of the Galaxy Vol 3 or as Guardians of the Galaxy as Thor put it um maybe, maybe there will be maybe there won't be but i can say this avengers endgame was the perfect conclusion to the mcu it was perfect it was so perfect that they did not even bother to include an after credit scene that's how good the conclusion was there's no post credit scene the only other mcu movie to not have an after credit scene was the incredible hulk so do with that what you will so that just leads me to be a little bit confused as to why after such a perfect conclusion they're making more movies like spider-man far from home is next it takes place after endgame after the conclusion which I mean, maybe that could show off some of, like, the, like, post, like, post-Endgame events, like, how the world was affected after the events of Endgame, like, how the people who, who have been turned to dust, how their lives have been affected or something, but I don't know, guys. I feel like if the, if this, if, if this whole thing had, con had concluded with Endgame and no other MCU movie had been made after, I feel like nobody would have complained. I mean, it literally has the word end in the title. It should have been the end. And yeah, guys, this this movie, it 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 spoke. Uh, I, what's the word I'm looking for? It uh, it was beautiful. I this is the best MCU movie in my opinion. Like out of every movie in. I watched starting with Iron Man the this movie this is the one that I thought was the best one 
Uh, I still haven't watched Far From Home, but it's not going to be as good as Endgame. I'm calling it right now. It is not going to be as good as Endgame. Now, was uh, was the fact that Spider-Man got dusted in Infinity War, was that an Endgame spoiler? Yes. What Did it play out exactly as I thought it would? Not really. I thought they were going to somehow use the Time Stone, but they didn't. Uh, because uh, that was... Thanos destroyed it before the events of this movie, so, yeah, but in some ways, it was, like, it played out how, like, what happened was, like, sort of what I, what I predicted, but at the same time, it was still, it, it was a blast to watch, it was such a good conclusion, and overall, this, it's Avengers Endgame, what can I tell you? The longest MCU movie was also my favorite, that should tell you how good this movie is. Anyway, uh, I've, I've gone on for way too long, so thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe, hit the bell, turn on notifications, follow us on Twitch and Instagram, and join our Discord server. And fellas, keep having the high ground. Bye.